Hello everyone, this is Rick Tobin again, with hints and ideas for survival and for your safety when bad things happen. This time I'm going to talk about flood insurance. Not your home insurance or your apartment insurance, because it doesn't cover floods. That's a great misunderstanding. Oh yeah, if the pipe breaks around your kitchen uh, above your house when it froze or something, that's different. That might be in your homeowner or renter's policy. But if there's a flood, a disaster from water, well, we all know the story on water. You know, the bottom line is not enough, you got drought. Too much, you drown. So water's a tricky thing. It's the most costly and the most dangerous threat that happens in the United States every year, including dollar values and loss of life. There is an insurance program nationally through the Federal Emergency Management Agency called the NFIP, the National Flood Insurance Program. It's been around a long time. A lot of people who should take advantage of it, who can take advantage of it, don't. Let me step back for a minute and give you a little caveat. There were an awful lot of people who had homes that were fully paid for in Northern California who didn't carry fire insurance. And when those fires have gone through the last couple of years, those people had nothing. Even when there was national disaster funds available, they couldn't take them out because they weren't going to be able to pay them back. They lost everything. And if they had had fire insurance ahead of time, they would have had some coverage. Now, I know everybody has tight budgets right now. We're all looking for ways to make that budget work for our home, our mortgages, everything else. But it's too late for a lot of people in California now on the West Coast because it takes at least 30 days, sometimes less depending on certain legal repercussions that you can ask for faster loans or faster insurance. But in most cases, it takes at least 30 days to get it passed. And you can't always get it. Your community has to be involved in the flood management program. That's a requirement, okay? And in the process, if you are outside of a flood zone, you can still get it. 20% uh, of the uh, returns or uh, coverages that get paid through the National Flood Insurance Program are people who are outside of flood zones. Now, let me mention something this year, and I don't like to do prediction stuff, but I'm telling you, this is what's coming. I've talked to my friends in California a long time about what was happening this winter and where things were going to go. And we just shake our heads. A lot of us were in emergency management for a long time with different agencies and did things. It's just going to be horrific the month of January and into February. But the people who don't have national flood insurance or who can't pay back the loans, they're going to be in trouble. And by the way, you ever take those loans once your house has been destroyed and you take a federal disaster funding? You have to take national flood insurance from FEMA for the rest of the time you own that house. So let's talk about where the risks I see coming this year, not just for the West Coast. I am most concerned at this point about the Midwest come this spring, the South and the Southeast. And there are three, three important terms. If you're living in these areas, you better think about this. If your community is doing a flood program so that you're qualified to get the insurance and you live in one, a confluence where rivers come together, two, an oxbow where the river turns, a river, a major creek turns like that and you're close to it, and three, a delta where the river runs down, has a wide area that spreads into a lake, ocean, whatever, and you're in that delta area. If you're anywhere near that and you're in a flood controlled area, your government there has approved controls already, and you can work through your insurance agent, I got to tell you, you better think hard about this this year. Don't put it off. 
Now you'll have to go through your insurer, talk to them about what's available. And for those of you who want to exceed what's available from national flood insurance policies, you can even get more. That's a separate program and different application. But there's some intricacies about this process, how it works, how you get to it and so forth. Look for online NFIP for fact sheets, FEMA, national flood insurance. There's just a plethora of information, but get moving. You don't have a whole lot of time. I can't do much for the people in California right now, or all the way up to Washington State, what's hitting them. It's too late for most of those who didn't get it in place in time. Now they may get from federal disaster, they may get some loans if they can afford it and they can pay them back. But if they can't, they're gonna be like those people in the fire zone in Northern California who were wiped out and they're never going back. It's going to be basically a loss, total loss. Now this may sound negative. There is a reason for insurance at some times. And this is one time when you should not go, and eh, I think I'll just pass on that. Yeah, we got rivers and streams nearby. If you're a homeowner or you live in an apartment and you think you're at risk and your community is planning for this, jump in and get it while you can. With that, I wish you all the best. I always want you to be safe and sound. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Know the right routes that'll make your life easier, sometimes when nature makes it a little harder. See you later, and more hints are coming. Take care.